And it's it forward. Hello everybody, welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. My name's Such. I'm going to stop you. Okay. Okay, speak again for us. Hello everybody, welcome to Planet FPL. No, it's not. Planet FPL. <laughs> What's wrong? Planet FPL. I just felt like you were spiking a bit. Go on, just start again. Hello everybody, welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fancy Premier League. My name is Serge. And my name is James. People's poll, James. Yes, it is. And uh, celebrating England under-21s victory on Saturday evening. Are we? Which, uh, what, what are we doing then? No, as in, is it a celebration? Yeah, celebrate it, yeah. It hardly has been. Well, uh, no one's got the bunting out and shit, but it's still something to celebrate and be quite happy about. You don't have to be proud and running around with your St. George's flag, but I think we can be happy about it. The the three options in the poll were all related to England under 21s. I say I nearly missed the game. So we was out on Saturday, and I was convinced the game was Sunday. It was only oh, about it was only an hour before kickoff. I realised. I uh, uh, I didn't watch it. I only watched the last seven or eight minutes. I'm trying to think what no what what did I notice that made me think oh. They're playing now, are they? It must have been something on Twitter or some alert that came up. No, it was a WhatsApp group that I'm in where someone messaged and said, oh, that went close. Wasn't me tweeting about Levi Colwell nah, nah. after about an hour going, this guy is brilliant. He gave away a penalty, mate. Pony. He did. Um, so yeah, I think it was a WhatsApp group that I was in. Someone said, oh, oh, that's gone close. And then I thought, let me go and have a look at the, uh, the time on the clock. And uh, that's when it got down to like 10 minutes left. And so I thought I'd watch the last 10 minutes for what it was worth. Uh, the options in the poll weren't necessary to discuss the under-21s of now. The first option was to discuss the team from 2009, which was the last time uh, England's under-21s got to the European Championships finals. So we're saying there's no under-21 World Cup, it's an under-20 World Cup. Um, when they were heavily beat by Germany in the final, an England team that included James Milner, Theo Walcott, Mika Richards... Uh, Joe Hart was suspended, having got a second yellow card in the tournament during the shootout victory over Sweden in the semi-final. That Germany team, six of the team that beat England were in the team that won the World Cup five years later, included uh, Manuel Neuer, Jerome Boateng, Mats Hummels, Meza Ozil, Sami Kadira, a brilliant group of talented kids. That was, I saw a statistic that uh, not only six of that team went on to play for Germany, but six of our team went on to play for Sunderland. Sorry, Mackhams. Uh, another option in the poll was to look at um, England's success generally across the youth groups since um, St George's Park was formed because that's going back to what, 12 years or so now. And one of the warnings at the time was that it will take a decade to really see the, the fruits of what will happen at youth levels. And England essentially have won everything now, <laughs> except one of the big ones with the full men's national team. Even the women's team's obviously been successful in their own Euros now. So under-20 World Cup winners 2017, under-19 Euro winners 2022, under-17 World Cup 2017, and now obviously the under-21s as well. So we've won at every youth level in the last six years. But the ones you did vote for was an analysis of the current winning under-21 squad. And the question to ask was, how many can we expect to become regulars for the full national team in future years? I don't think... Ironically, despite it being victorious, I don't think this is a vintage under-21 group. I don't look at this team and think, yeah, there's six guys there like that Germany team in 09. Six guys that all, they'll all end up playing for the first team and they'll, they'll win a major tournament for England together. All right, like, let's I don't start see that. with a little guessing game. Go on, then. I'm going to, how many players in the squad? Uh, it was a squad of 23. Okay, let's see how many I can guess. So I know Trafford in goal, obviously, clearly. But you probably didn't this time last nah, week. I didn't. Uh, until the penalty save, I didn't even know. Yep. Like, the only reason I remember his surname is because the same as Old Trafford, the stadium. <laughs> so let's count them on your fingers. So Trafford in goal. Yep. Colwell, obviously, we mentioned. Yeah. Uh, I've seen Anthony Gordon with his bleach blonde kicking around, scoring yeah, goals. Yeah, yeah. Cameron Archer, I know, scored goals. Yeah. And I've heard Gibbs White yeah. has played. So that's five out of the 21. Ben Johnson was getting a bit I'm of love sure, from boy, West Ham. Yeah. So not, he not a regular starter. He's nah. 23, by the way. Is it? Yeah. You allow a couple of olders. What, it, what it is, no, the way it works is when the qualifying, if you're under 21 when the qualifying starts, yeah, you can you can carry on playing. Fine. So you can end up with players that are 23. Right. Uh, okay, that's it. Then, um, 
uh, Gibbs White, I said already. Yeah. Uh, was I don't know who else would be there as a goalkeeper backup. I'm never going to get you a wouldn't. Backup you wouldn't know the Kate was. Um, who else is a kid playing? Like f- none of the England guys are there. For, they're all playing for the senior team. Um, I don't think there's anyone in that. Oh, Emil Smith Rowe. So I think it's the only one that's been capped at full level. I think I want to say that's correct. I don't even know how some of these some players are like. How is Tarek Lamptey, for example? He's injured, isn't he? Gone in. Huh? He's he played for in? Ghana, I think. Yeah, I okay. think I'm pretty sure Fair he play. did. Yeah. Um, I'm struggling here now to name any other players. That's I don't know who else that. is in that squad. I mean, his name should be familiar with. If I start showing them, you know, you'll know Noni Madueke, who's gone to Chelsea. Oh, yeah, sorry, I saw him. Cole Palmer at Manchester City. Yeah, yeah, I saw him come off the pitch um, as well. Um, Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones yeah. at Liverpool, yeah, James yeah, yeah. Garner James at Everton, Quinn, Jacob fine. Ramsey at Aston Villa, we really yeah. like. Oliver Skip at Tottenham. Ramsey's not made it since the net full men's team. What's that? Ramsey's not been in the full men's squad ever. I don't think so. Um, he's 22 now, but he's on the verge of it. He actually missed um, the semi final and the final due to injury, and he's likely to unfortunately miss the start of the season. But when they had the, all their pictures with the trophy at the end, they were all holding up his shirt and stuff, weren't they? I suppose it's different. If, if you'd have been part of the full men's tournament, maybe you'd have stayed out there with the squad. But I guess his club probably wanted him back. And it's like these tournaments at this level is all about progression as a footballer. As much as winning is brilliant for the kids that they've done it, but it's about the experience that that tournament. That's what's great about it to reflect on it. That these guys, when we look at full men's England teams in the past, we watch them in major tournaments, you think we're short of experience in terms of winning mentality and know how. Through all these age groups now, they've They've got it somewhere. There'll be something where kids are coming through and they've had a really good positive experience. A number of players in this squad played also for like the under-17 World Cup team, I think. So, so there's a couple of them have won like multiple trophies at youth level for England now. Who who else is in there? That you'd know? Yeah. Uh, Max Aarons of Norwich. Okay. Luke Thomas at Leicester. Uh, you might be familiar with Jared Brantfweight. Of Everton, who was on yep. loan at PSV Eindhoven last year. Yeah. Um, million, eh? Most of them you'll know. Yeah. And also then the second question is, how many of them are playing for what we would consider big six? It's a couple of Chelsea boys, Cole Palmer, the two Liverpool guys, so that's five. Emil Smith-Rowe, that's it six. Depends if you want to put Oliver Skip in that category or not, I suppose. <laughs> Skip ain't making it to the England main men's national team. So I'm going to include him. So six there. That are playing for... Madueke. Mad, I counted him, two Chelsea. Okay. Two Chelsea, two Liverpool, uh, a City. Arsenal. And an Arsenal. And Tottenham. Any Man United? Or oh, how many City did you say? Cole Palmer. Anyone it's else? Three. Oh. It's three. Um, well, actually, no, it's four. You've got Tommy Doyle. Never um, heard of him. Midfielder was on loan at Sheffield United last year. You've got uh, Harwood Bellis, who was captain. Never heard of him. on loan at Burnley all of last season, centre-back. And obviously Trafford is Manchester City. Oh, is he? Who's going to, we think, is going to join Burnley. But it's not going to. on a permanent, yet. yeah? Yeah, 15 million rising to 19 million, apparently. Mm-hmm. That deal was agreed last week. And then if Man City are now asking for more money. The three keepers you wouldn't be intre- uh, you wouldn't know a lot about. And most people wouldn't. Yeah, so. rarely do you till they break through. Would all three of them played um, lower level last year? All played in, in League One. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, James Trafford has been at Bolton basically for the last 18 months. Actually had a period last year where he kept nine consecutive clean sheets, was part of the Bolton team that beat Plymouth in the EFL Trophy Final or the Pizza Cup or whatever it's called this year. Uh, Josh Griffiths was recalled by West Brom, I think from Portsmouth in January and actually played 10 times in a championship last year. And Cole Rushworth is is on the books at Brighton, who spent uh, a year in League Two last year and a year in League One last season. Um, he's 22. I don't suppose by this this point he's going to get a look in at Brighton. He's probably going to have to drop back down to the leagues. It's interesting that I guess for keepers, developments later is probably more difficult. So the thing as an overall, when I reflect keepers on this Keepers' careers team, are longer. If, if I said to you, pick five players from that squad who you thought was most likely to make it into the, the, men's, f- national in, into the men's national team I in the future. I five but might be tricky. I think, yeah, I bet they will. I think you pick mainly attacking players. So the thing with the men's national team right now is you've also got to understand... So there's two things to look at because I look at it and I say, look, the majority of the squad is not top five, six or whatever. Whereas when you look at the national team, majority is more often than not. If you look at Stones, Maguire, um, Luke Shaw, 
Um, you've got Foden, Grealish, Harry Kane, Bukaya Saka, and so on and so on. Chelsea, Mason Mount. You've got a vast majority of that team is big six. Yep. And inevitably, if you're good enough to be in the England national team, you're you're probably good enough to play for one of the big six because even the likes of Madison has moved now. Declan Rice has moved now. Jordan Pickford is goalkeeper is slightly different, but I think I mean Trippier was at Spurs and then um, Athletic Co before Athletic Newcastle. Newcastle. So he's not at a lower level tier. So when I'm looking at the men's national team, I think that the majority of those players are going to come from big six clubs, and therefore the question is how many of these kids are going to get into a big six club? That's a good question, yeah. And the second thing is. Right now, Declan Rice has just turned 24. Bukaya Saka is 19. Phil Foden... Is he just... He can't just be 19 still, Saka. Saka's is he 19. really? I'm pretty no, sure he is. No, he can't be. But he's still qualified for this team. I, I get the Are point. Sure? I get he can't still be yeah. 19. Okay, well, Foden is still a kid. He's going to yeah. take over the world if he's uh, only 19. I mean, he's about 21 or two, I think. Saka. Bukaya. Nico he's said he's 21. Now. Okay. He can't be eight. a teenager. No way, mate. He's too, he's too good <laughs> to be a teenager. But wow. I get your point. Okay. There, are, there are a number um, of young players in the full so team many. who would qualify for this already. Yes, so many. And so not only do you have to get it, make it at the top, you have to displace some of these guys. And I'm thinking the learning curve, like some of these guys made it into the squad so young, right? Um, Rashford is still young and he's got another four or five years ahead of him. The spot that's most available is maybe Gary Kane's striker slot. He's 30 this month but right? it's just one spot isn't that's it that's it so and then what you've and got Ivan Tony you've got, Tony, wing you've got Ollie Watkins Callum is Wilson still young in the wings um, Calvin Lewin is what mid 20s yeah yeah so I, I think the, the the leap is very big like Ben Johnson is going to get into the England squad no. right, necessarily I, have so. I mean you need a bunch of uh, injuries like right back we've already talked about but it, then so if you know weakest, biggest, weakest spot in the England team at the moment Centre-backs. He's either centre-back or I, I think with everyone's fit in midfield, like with Rice and Bellingham in there. I mean, Bellingham, fuck, man. He is 19, isn't he? <laughs> that's like, maybe that's what's <laughs> on my brain, is Bellingham is, is 19. Jude, Jude right? Bellingham. Jesus Christ. You get bought by Real Madrid for over 100 million. You're 19. Like, how do you feel when you go to bed at night? Yeah. It's uh, madness. I, I, that's why I think um, good achievement, well done, and there'll be some regular Premier League players in that squad. But it wouldn't surprise me if we went through that list and the ones that are likely to make it are the ones that are already at the big six clubs. So Colwell has been great for Brighton last year and great for Chelsea. Can he make it? Yeah. Madueke as well. Obviously, they brought him back for, for money. Um, so, Compet yes. Competitive though, right? Like yeah. Saka or Rashford or Grealish is what he's competing with. Yeah, right, it's, it's not going to be easy, but uh, whether or not he could be one of the midfield three, I don't know. Um, and also you've seen people like him very young burst on the scene. I think another Chelsea player, Callum Hudson-Odoi. Yeah, fell away a bit. Burst on, you were like, oh my God, this this kid is such a huge talent and it's not really happened for one reason or another. Yeah, Smith-Rowe, I would have... I, I think if Smith-Rowe doesn't do well at Arsenal this year... Um, oops, they could sell him. Clip flying, whoops, my bad. Yeah, but he, um, They he, could sell him because they bought Havertz, similar role. But he's... Homegrown and all that. Maybe they keep him around just because he's got no value and they need that squad player. He's also had a very injury-interrupted few years. No, injury-interrupted career. Up. Really? Well, yeah. But, but then, then at what point do you cut your losses no, and say, you know what, you're not going to ever get fit? Completely not comparable as players. But Steven Gerrard is a, is a perfect case of someone who in his teens and his early 20s suffered massively with reoccurring injuries and then really filled out into a man once he turned into his early 20s and then obviously became the great player that he was. So I'm not, I don't I'm doubt not, his talent, I'm not comparing them as players, but a lot of it's growing pain. If you said to me, put 20 quid on it, I'd play I don't think so. Just not because of the amount of other talent that's there. Well, Smith Rowe's the one that's already played for England. The Liverpool boys, um, I think, have got potential. Jones and Elliot. Uh, Elliot is near enough the youngest player in this squad. Um, they definitely got the potential actually, to make it. He only turned twenty in April, which is one of the younger ones in in this age group. So, and we also have to remember for, for Harvey Elliott as well, missed a year of his development because of the the, the terrible Horrible injury he had at Leeds. So, in effect, in terms of his career, he's almost 19, basically. So, he's got a brilliant goal against Germany in the group stage, and I think he's got development. And I, I get more impressed by Curtis Jones, actually, every time I watch him. It's almost unfashionable 
I think, um, to like Curtis Jones. But he's, he's good on the ball, really good all-round game. He's not going to be a world beater, but I think he's a good player. I wouldn't be surprised if he started the season for Liverpool, for example. He's 22 now, so he's coming to that age where he wants to be a, a regular starter. I don't think he wants to look elsewhere. It's his club, Liverpool, isn't it? Yeah, so it's probably yeah and I think he should stay there as well. That. I think Oli Skip, but he mentioned at Spurs, he's not going to make it long-term. Not in the England squad. He could always, he might end up at a tournament as a backup defensive midfielder, but it's not really likely. But then other worst things have happened, like Carlton Palmer has played for England. David Batty <laughs> has played for England. Do you know what I mean? So that you can have. I didn't p- mind David Batty. Low he was talent. very good. Yeah, ta- and tackling, good and d- d- tackling and that was fine, but he wasn't exactly like a kept, Pirlo, he was kept, he? he? No, he kept it simple. simple. Didn't he? So if you wanted Ollie Skip to win the ball, keep it simple, he could do that. It's not like. I would if I saw Ollie skip there. I wouldn't shit I think, myself. I think I just the problem fill for, me with joy. I think the problem for Ollie is, yeah. But then if you, it, it, it's generational a little bit, isn't it? Take someone like Ollie, who's got great energy, good good box to box player, and also very firm in the tackle and quite safe in terms of his passing, etc. He's someone I think in certain generations think of England's abysmal midfield under Kevin Keegan, for example. Think like he, at that sort of era, or even earlier under Graham Taylor. He'd had a, a shot of getting in, maybe even sort of Capello's midfield, maybe if he'd have come through at that right sort of time. Whereas now there's so much onus. If you're going to be that deepest player, um, so much onus in terms of how you distribute and play out. The word the word early on the Tottenham is that the intention is to use Bissouma as the deep lying playmaker next year and Skip as as the backup. That's the early intention. Obviously, that's only Skip's club as well. And Dombele so. up ahead. With Ndombele as a roaming 10, I'm joking yes. before you stick him in your FPL team. Buy him, 4.5. <laughs> Don't um, do that. you got Anthony Gordon in Newcastle. He definitely, obviously, very talented. Player of the tournament. Could make it. He was really good in the court. He final. said to me, Gordon, I'd put him on the yes list of probably could make it into the England squad consistently. I think um, he suffered a little bit with the, the press Off-field of... Shit. Um, Let's be honest. It was. It was. It looks like it was a bit of a dick in terms of how he left Everton, etc. And the the price is massive that Newcastle ended up paying. You look at the potential of him. I thought, particularly in that first half of the quarterfinal against Portugal, it was outstanding actually. And what was interesting in terms of the way England played, in terms of development, if we move away from individuals for a moment, is essentially didn't play the centre forward for the majority of the tournament. You dropped that, mate. Well, it fell. So, yeah. like, in the final, for example, they switched to more of a 4-3-3 three, three later in the game and brought Archer on up front. Well, I was going to say, but, what about... But generally, they were starting with, like, Gibbs, White and Gordon as two central forwards and two wide players uh, in the ilk of, like, Smith Rowe uh, and Jacob Ramsey as one of them, really, before his injury, who could come more into 10 positions, almost a little bit like a, a, a Unai Emery set up at certain stages. Um, and distribution from the back... Much better. I mean, the reason I tweeted during the game on um, Saturday was about Colwell, where it was like you could feel England beginning to feel a bit of pressure. And every time England needed to play out through Colwell, his weight of pass was so good. So, like, Harry Maguire has been like a player who's been ridiculed quite a lot, but his England performances have largely been very good, even despite the fact, as a left-sided centre-back, where Ten Hag has generally decided he, he, he can't use him there because his distribution is not good enough. But he can run into trouble. Look at the goal Italy conceded, uh, England conceded in Italy, in Naples, against Italy, where Maguire gets drawn out and they let him come out, let him come out and intercept the pass. And that's a problem for England. And that's why I, I think about Colwell's distribution as a natural left footer, at left-sided centre-back. It's so obvious to get him in as quickly as possible for me, but he's got to play regularly for Chelsea or go exactly. back to Brighton or and whatever that's like, going to be. Okay, you're going to sh- get Colwell straight in or would you pick Lewis Dunk? If the tournament's this summer... Well, it doesn't matter. Southgate will pick Maguire as it stands. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying... And I understand if, that because... If Colwell Ma- has a great season, Ma- there's pl- other players that have are waiting in Ma- the line. Ma- Maguire... Like, generally bar one stupid game against Denmark in the Nations League game during the COVID period, has never really let England down. Yeah. Solid as. Particularly in the major tournaments, actually. Reflect on the, the people forget, because we, we did quite well again, that the performance against USA in the group stage where everybody was moaning, oh, terrible. And we all got, oh, Harry Maguire was probably our best player, like quietly and stuff. So Southgate will have faith in that. But I think Colwell... Of all the players here, is the one is most likely to make 
that step. He's only 20 as well. So again, he's one of the youngest players in that age bracket. And you think of the players we try and put in there. You mentioned Lewis Dunk, for example, Serge. Um, people have talked about Fikayo Tomori, for example, Mark Gaye. In terms of natural distribution from le- uh, as on a left foot, not as good as Colwell. Suddenly you're putting Colwell and Stones at centre-back. Your distribution from that area is really good. I know a lot of us would like to see Southgate try with Stones or probably not Stones so much because we're not as strong defensively. But a Stones or a Trent come into holding midfield positions, be it from centre-back or, or right-back. It looks like he wants to use... Trent in the central midfield area. What are you looking at, Serge? I was looking at the players and somehow pressed something and they've all disappeared. Okay. Did you know, actually, Leave it to by me. the way, <laughs> that Charlie Creswell is Aaron Creswell's cousin? No, I didn't. Well, you know that now. Did you know that if, no, you, that if you speak beyond the mic like this, people <laughs> no won't can hear, hear you? <laughs> yeah, I made that up. I didn't even know Charlie Creswell. Never heard of him. Oh, so it's not true? No, it's not oh, true. It's fucking bullshit. Charlie Creswell was on the books of Leeds. We'd probably be first team for Leeds and this I, year at centre-back. I'm a big fan of this guy. <laughs> Angel Gomez. He's very good. I'll talk about him in a second. Charlie Cresswell was on loan all season at Millwall um, last, season. last year. And I'd expect he'll probably become Robin Cox left lead. So he'll probably become first choice for them last year. He has played a handful of games in the Premier League. Uh, Angel Gomez, Serge. Um, Angel Gomez. Came through the books. If we, if we do this and we just keep importing in players like that in that way. But well, then uh, you could talk about a lot of... I think it's Black Angel. players of African heritage or Caribbean heritage or whatever else. So do you know where he's from? Angel Gomez, Colombia. No. So uh, I, Fulham. I'm pretty sure that he was born in the UK, I want to say, actually. So. Slough. <laughs> Slough. Should we see? Yeah, it's just his name obviously stands know, out on the page um, quite a lot. He's English Portuguese. I know that. Okay. And I think he's, uh, his parents are Portuguese. He was born uh, in... Slough. Uh, Reading General Hospital. Uh, oh my God, he was born down the road at Edmonton, North uh, oh, London. Fair play. It's probably North Middlesex <laughs> Hospital. Was that where you were? Which is where I was born. <laughs> I was born at Enfield Chase, which is like 500 meters from your house. Um, Edmonton is a uh, North Middlesex Hospital. It's a stone throw for I say a stone throw, a very big stone throw uh, from White Hart Lane. Interestingly, so the there new, you go. The new White Hart but he he does qualify for Portugal, and obviously you can um, switch, switch allegiance. Doesn't matter how many times you play for the under twenty ones. Let's go, on Nico. Slide into his game. DMs, Sir uh, Angel and Gomez. Angel, I think it's just Angel. Angel, Angel. Well, why he's playing for England? Slide into his DMs. And tell him to sign for Portugal, not England. <laughs> he's just Angel, but he's a very talented player. He came through the youth ranks at Manchester United. Yeah. Uh, and I think he was largely labelled as a youngster, as an attacking midfield player. Was released at the end of his contract, went to Lille, spent a year on loan at Boa Vista in Portugal, um, and has broken in to the Lille team over the last couple of years. It's, it's one of the biggest clubs in France. Uh, he's played as a more of a deep line position for England, and that's the first time really I've seen him. Ball distribution and calmness, really good. Really good. Um, was asked over the weekend if I thought he could cut it in the Premier League. And I wasn't asked at what level, but could he could he be of interest to Premier League clubs? I think very, very quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if a Premier League club made a bid for him this summer. Okay. Um, so he's a talent, certainly, to keep an eye on. So, so yeah, good play. He was part of the, the starting lineup. A good player. Um, on Cameron Archer... Um, it's obviously a big season for him at, at Villa. And I think with Villa in Europe, we can certainly expect him to get opportunities. But Ollie Watkins obviously does stand in his way, um, not just for Villa, but potentially for England in the future. And he wasn't an auto starter for this team. No, but a very heard, talented um, boy. In a review I saw of the Euros, um, that he'd scored 11 goals in 17 for Middlesbrough in the second half of last season. Yep. That's better than one every other game. And he was two goals and an assist from five appearances in the tournament. Again, yeah, largely as a substitute, better than every other game. Again, and not getting the minutes. So this season, this calendar year, his record at games to goals or attacking returns, it was eleven goals and six assists or something. People so at Villa speak very highly. Yeah, of he he's one where he's sitting there like a Balagan or a, a. I mean, you can't count like in Ketchuri and Nacho, but you look at them and you're like, go and be a striker at a club. Like, don't just sit behind Ollie Watkins for a season. Unless, I mean, he really believes that he is going to be the main man there and he can oust Ollie Watkins. Don't sit there because I think um, you're right. I think there's a striker in him that could be... Villa, Villa obviously potential. went and got Duran in January. He was essentially back up to Watkins and doesn't threaten him. I think he's also a young player as well. They obviously let Ings go. So you've got those two young players. 
behind him. He'll get opportunities. I yeah, think. which and I think he he might he he might like be better off minutes, staying there this year. Don't forget and, they got the Conference League as well. So th- that's and what I'm saying. Perfect. He'll get opportunities. Well. Yeah, yeah. I I think he's one that uh, I'll be interested to see if he can make it in the England. I, I think team. of those attacking players in that squad, the most likely to become a regular for England is is his teammate, is is Jacob Ramsey, who obviously missed the semi and the final. I think he's a brilliant talent. I think he can play anywhere across the midfield. He's got real physical drive about him, good technically. I don't think he has any major weaknesses. I think you could play him in a deeper role, perhaps as he ages and progresses. I think with respect to Villa, should he have a very good season, I think the Champions League regulars would, would begin to look at him potentially for a big money move. That's not to suggest he wants to leave Villa in any way, but I think he he's he's probably the outstanding talent from this group. And debatably, the, the one to debate is the other one, maybe is Morgan Gibbs-Wyatt. Who, yeah, he's who, um he's in the maybe column for me. Who looks like he's beginning to sort out some question marks over his his attitude, which I think playing regularly for Nottingham Forest and being a kind of a core component of that team's been really important for him. Rather than him being a fringe player, probably needs to feel like his importance in the team. Make him and captain. You, you could tell his importance in this team as well. I mean, like I said, I know Anthony Gordon won player of the tournament, but from the bits I saw and read and heard, it might have arguably been Morgan Gibbs White for me. So I think Gibbs, White, Ramsey have real potential to be a part of the squad. So when you look at that back line, it looks quite weak. Um, and, and what I mean by that is England basically covered up problems. So James Garner was a, traditionally as a midfield player at Everton, obviously joined them from Manchester United last summer and been at Nottingham Forest on loan the year before. Traditionally a central midfield player. He did fill in at right wing back for Everton right at the end of last season. He basically played every game surge at right back. And commonly England played at left back, either Luke Thomas or played Max Aarons out of position out there or Ben Johnson covered there as well. So you look at that in terms of full back areas and go, oh, that's a a little bit weak. But I don't know if that's a psychological, like I said, that is it easier for young players to progress and come through if they're attacking players rather than defensive players? Like this group of players maybe isn't as exposed to top level in the way that many of the attacking players, a lot of these attacking players have got good Premier League experience. Yep. That's not quite the case for the defensive players. They've had to go and seek it elsewhere. Taylor Harwood Bellis, who was captain of the team at centre back, just spent last year on loan at Burnley. Gerald Brankthwaite, as I said, has played regularly for PSV Eindhoven in, in the Eredivisie last year. They've had to come out of the Premier League to gain that experience. And obviously, in the case of Colwell, he's obviously, to be honest, most wouldn't have heard of him this time last year. Had an exceptional season at Brighton. Why I was so impressed watching him at the weekend was, I think a, a lot of players can look very good under what the manager's doing there at Brighton. You know, what's the responsibility when you've got maybe less experienced players around you and the distribution is purely on you, exceptional. So, I, I, to be honest, other than Colwell, I'm not convinced that any of the rest of that defensive lot become first first team players yep. for England. To be totally honest, Harwood Bellis might develop. Is the first time I'd really looked at him, um, and he played absolutely fine in the final. I thought he had a very shaky second half of the quarter final against Portugal when England come under pressure. Old habits came out in that game where it was like couldn't keep the ball. Hoof it a little bit, yeah. It was a bit backs to the wall. Um, I think the likes of Tommy Doyle we haven't seen enough of. One of him or James McAtee will probably go back to Sheffield United, we think, probably. They were both there last year. And, of course, there are players potentially to have a look at who have been in and around the squad who didn't get in on this occasion. Uh, King Lewis Potter had a difficult first season at Brentford that was quite in- injury-interrupted, still only 22. A few other players would have still qualified for this under-21 team include Conor Gallagher, who has obviously established himself, I think, I'd say established himself, but he's certainly in and around the, the squad call-ups, no doubt about that. Lewis Hall of Chelsea, he's only 18, might be a, a name to keep an eye on. Many would have seen him play basically out of position, left-back uh, for Chelsea at certain points last season, basically a midfield player. And obviously, Rico Lewis at City is unlimited potential of what he could be. He's only 18. Um, but what might be even more exciting is is to look at the under-19 winning squad uh, from last summer because it, this is the next group that's probably going to play in the next under-21 tournament. And I think there's some really interesting names to 
keep an eye out from this group. So, so uh, keeper was Matthew Cox of Brentford. Yeah, they're not short of a good goalkeeper, Brentford. He's likely to be probably under 21's regular first choice, I imagine, for the next few years. Um, Brooke Norton Cuffey, Arsenal, as right back, spent last year on loan at, at Coventry City. Powerful player. Uh, when I watched the under-19s last year, I didn't think it was the best technically, but stood out because of sheer physicality and size, like bigger than everybody else, basically. Um, nice to get forward. Um, a lot of Liverpool fans told me they're a little bit unconvinced about Jarrell Quanso, played centre-back. I thought looked quite good to me last summer. But some, again, it's some of the attacking talent that's quite exciting. Connie Chukwamika, we should be familiar with, was the star yep. of this team. It's Again, though, if you don't get no Chelsea. minutes, you ain't going to get nowhere. Well, I, I when he went there last summer, I stressed it as a concern. Yeah. He's got a good manager now in Pochettino who we know can, if he's good enough, he'll get a chance. He won't get blocked off like a Conte. Won't, oh, you're not experienced enough. If he's good enough, Pochettino will will give him the chance. Yeah. And same might be true now for someone like Alfie Devine um, at Tottenham. Uh, Tim Rogbenham, uh, who's also on the books of Aston Villa, was basically Chuck Wamika's partner in that tournament in midfield last year. More defensive midfielder. You've got Jacob's brother, Aaron Ramsey, also on the books of Aston Villa. Alex Scott of Bristol City has been very highly rated by anybody who watches championship football. has been linked with a lot of Premier League clubs. May even move this summer. Harvey Vale basically ended up playing left wing back or left wing for the team, which isn't necessarily his best position. He's captain Chelsea at youth levels uh, and you've got a couple of other attacking wide players primarily we'd probably call forwards who are both at big major clubs out in Europe so Jamie Bino Gittens has already played around about 25 times for Borussia Dortmund uh, and Sammy Willing Jr got appearances for Juventus this year this year which included a, a very exciting cameo actually when they were 4-1 down at Benfica uh, and managed to bring the game back to 4-3 I'd watched the end of that game and that was my first time seeing him they're both very bright and exciting wide players. Liam Delap at Manchester City. People will have seen in the Championship. Daniel Jebison might be a player we see for Sheffield United this year as a forward. Dane Scarlett at Tottenham is probably going to have to go out on loan. Well, he's definitely going to have to go out on loan to get opportunities this year because yeah. Tottenham obviously haven't got European competition. But again, that group, of, that's the next group that you're going to see in kind of the next under-21s. You don't think Dane good enough to be Richie's backup? I think... It's difficult for people like Dane because Dane's a really good finisher and he's very intelligent movement. First time I saw him, I thought, oh, your movement off the ball is better than most top-level kids at your race. His movement's really good. But he's not, I wouldn't describe him as exceptional or anything yet. His hold-up play is okay. He played for Tottenham in one of Nuno's last games in Vitesse where he basically played, Nuno basically played B team. Lost the game and he shouldn't have gone that week. And the poor kid got so isolated, he was getting smashed all over the place. But it had been a great experience for him to to learn and have that physicality of, of battle. He's a talent now. Good finisher. Like I said, movement really, really good. But he won't be part of Tottenham's team. You've got Troy Parrott's coming back to Tottenham this year, which would be ahead of yeah. him in terms of age group, Republic of Ireland International at the moment. It's always, when you look at these age groups, it's always the kind of attacking midfield talent that stands out most. And the same is true for this under-21 group. Like, those those kind of group that played up in the forward areas, other than Archer, none of them are forwards. They're all linked and interchanged. And it was really nice to see a refreshing team playing more what we'd consider other teams to play. I think that's the big difference when I've watched England younger teams over the last few years is it's not if we're playing Spain, it's not like so obvious anymore. We're playing Germany. It's not so obvious. Like we keep the ball a lot better. And I think the what's come out of the development of St George's Park and these youth kids is, is the way we play. It's much better. There's a few there got a chance, but in all honesty, I don't think it was a great age group. It's probably only a handful yep. that make it through to the full team. You're absolutely right to highlight. You've got people like Bellingham have already burst through at like 19 the way past it. Bellingham's younger than every every player was in that under-21 squad. Yeah, and he's an exceptional talent, so I don't think you can always use him as a benchmark. A but, but also, he's not the only one, because Foden and Saka and all these guys are all doing it. There's multiple players players doing it. Um, there we go. That's a bit of a wrap-up of England's under-21s. There's shitloads of highlights on YouTube, so go head over there and watch it. And they're in, not easy to find. 
Yeah, this is what I'm saying when you said people are celebrating. There's not a lot of content out there. No, but I, don't, I don't mean celebrating, you know. but to be honest, like if you were watching a game like me at, at the weekend... and It was nice England won. Don't get me wrong. Well, the drama at the end as well. But there was very little on YouTube, very little on the BBC website and no news websites. No one did. Whereas previously, Sky had normally, normally had the tournament, so I don't know if like UEFA were asking too much money or something. I have no idea. At least Channel 4 picked up the final. Yep. Um, it's a shame because what I don't... It's like almost like broadcasters don't understand the football fan. There's no football on. People need their fix, right? So people give them would, something. People would watch the games. And you're probably not playing a, an earth for it. But when Trafford saved the penalty at the weekend, it was a shit penalty, and it was a dodgy decision. Like you felt something in that moment. It was like great, yeah. particularly yeah. my missus. Double save as well. You know, it was most that was my missus, wasn't it? Oh, does that mean we avoid extra time? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right here, babe. Yeah. <laughs> nice uh, we're back at you tomorrow with Sky Fantasy Football the game has opened I haven't logged in yet mate do we have team IDs in Sky never even looked at it uh, no, who cares uh, but we're back at you with Sky Fantasy Football tomorrow and for patrons more Saudi Arabia if you want to support the show you can head over to patreon.com forward slash planet FPL other than that stay safe ciao for now thanks everyone be nice to each other cue music please man child 